It's very likely that either you or someone you know, a relative, a daughter, a son, whoever it may be, has a cat and loves them, um, well, as if they were their own child. And today we're going to put together what we've uh, called our perfect cookie jar. Um, now it doesn't have to, obviously, you don't have to put cookies in it. I actually, when I went out shopping, um, to buy supplies for this bundle, I got catnip and I got those little pouch foods um, that I'm sure my cat will love. Uh, I'm not gonna give this to my cat, I'll give it to someone that actually uh, <laughs> has a cat. I'm not gonna gift this to myself. Uh, but either way, it's a great little, great little gift and we don't really have a lot of animal related elements so, or projects, so um, this is a good little start to, to doing that. So anyway, um, obviously there's a container and then there's a lid and in front of me here I have the two sections that make up the container and as you can see I've already pre-folded everything including the little tabs here and one thing to note these little tabs here you want to make sure that you flatten them nice and flat um, what I did was I grabbed my little silhouette um, this is a tool used for vinyl. If you have a bone folder, you can use that, uh, a, a ruler, whatever it may be, just get those nice and flat. Um, and then the cool thing is that the alignment on these is going to be fairly simple because they're already connected at one of the sections. So without further ado, we'll just kind of jump right in here. It doesn't really matter if you start at the top or the bottom, but I am gonna start here uh, away from the middle, either below or above. And we're gonna begin by just simply putting glue on the first tab here and tucking it behind its neighbor, making sure that we get everything nice and lined up and just press that into place. Try to nudge this piece here as close as you can to this piece right here. It's almost as if you want to kind of, well, not quite, but almost almost touching the score lines on there. Almost, not quite, okay? And then we'll just move right on up to this section here. Get some glue on there. And I'm just gonna kind of dab that with my finger, spread that out nicely, and get that lined up. Now this part here that I'm holding right now, that I'm gluing, this is gonna be the top. The bottom here you can see has a smaller little tab so we can put a bottom on it, okay? Now I can move on over to this section here. You can certainly move any section out of the way to make it easier to glue or apply your glue, just like that. And when I do that with my finger, when I kinda dab the uh, the area that I applied glued to it thins it out and it kind of makes it tackier which ultimately makes it dry faster so that's why sometimes when you're watching me do this and you're crafting along you'll notice that I'm really kind of zipping through these and if you cannot or if you're falling behind a little bit, chances are you're using way too much glue. So go easy on the glue. Okay, so we're gonna line that up just like that. And just hold that in place, let that set. And there we go. Okay, so two sections together. And really the, the rest of it is exactly the same. It's pretty repetitive. We're gonna do the same thing here. Now, all I did there was I just kinda moved it out of the way, that other section. We'll apply our glue to this tab here. And just give that a little dab. And get that nice and lined up. And just press and hold. There we go. And we'll peel that back. get glue on the next tab. And when I dab it like this, it also helps me kind of spread that glue out 
uh, and have it just ensure that it covers the entire area of that tab all the way out to the very, very edge, which helps, well, kind of helps it, helps the project look more polished, more complete, and actually, uh, well, make it more sturdy as well. Okay, so we'll get that out of the way for a second while we apply glue to this tab. And I recently got an email from one of our dreamers asking about, well, she said she uses the same glue that I use. This is the, uh, the Scotch Quick Dry Tacky Glue. And she mentioned that sometimes she has a hard time with the amount of glue that comes out of there. And I mentioned to her that occasionally, well, most, most often, most times, um, and by the way, we're moving on to this next tab here. Uh, most times, I actually forget to put the lid on the little cap uh, for the glue bottle. And I noticed that, well, right at the very tip of the bottle, a little bit of that glue dries. And it does help um, kind of slow down the flow of the glue. But today, uh, I actually have a brand new nozzle and I do notice that the glue is coming out with more velocity and it's just a, a little bit wider. Uh, but if that's the case, you just have to just simply not push as hard or not squeeze as hard. And again, only get as much glue as you need. And then it definitely helps to just kind of spread that glue out and thin it out. And you can see how we've got this whole section complete and not one sign of any glue squirting out anywhere. Okay, and that's what we're looking for in the inside. Everything looks good there. Everything's making good contact, nice and solid. Okay, so again, less is more when it comes to the glue. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're actually going to connect these two sections together. Okay, and grab this end here. And you can see how this goes, very simple. And what I think I might do, since all of the other ones were basically connected in the center, I think we'll begin there, get the center nice and aligned, and that will kind of set the tone for the rest of the assembly. Now when we do this, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we give this ample time to really, really dry before we move on and start adding any stress to this piece that's anchoring this whole section, because relatively speaking, relative to this one little tab, this structure is pretty heavy, and it's gonna be a lot of work for this guy to handle. Okay, so we just wanna get that, get that lined up as accurately as you can, do it in whatever way is easiest for you. I just kind of rotated it and that felt more natural. Okay, and just press and hold that in place. You can actually just take it and squeeze it like that, if that helps. And that certainly did. Okay, so you can see how they're connected there nicely. And as I mentioned, I am not going to rush this right now. I'm gonna let this set a little bit. In the meantime, I'm just gonna go over and just talk about some of the uh, other parts of our cute little, well, this is the way it was designed with the colors. This is like an orange tabby. Now, uh, one thing I do wanna mention is that uh, we've created two options, okay, and one, there is a female version of our kitty. And when we get to it, when we get to that point, um, she'll have a nice little, nice little blouse and a nice little pendant where our male cat is going to have a bow tie. Okay, and you can see here, this is going to be our, our female I believe that that's how that works, yeah. 
that's going to be the female collar, while the male collar is right here. Okay, and the male collar is obviously going to have the tie. So depending on if you want to make a boy cat or a girl cat, you've got both options. And I will show you how that all works once we cross that bridge, as they say. Okay, so I think we've had enough time for this to set. So what I'm going to do is just continue working along, uh, basically doing the same thing we did with the first three sections. And if it helps, you can kind of push the section out of the way so you can really get your hand in there and grip it because this thing is, uh, well, twice as long now. So you've got twice as much paper to handle. And we'll spread that glue out, try to get it all over that tab. And tuck it under, tuck it right behind, and get that nice and lined up. out of the way and we'll apply our glue here so this process at this point um, since we've got all of this pretty much connected it's gonna be pretty repetitive so if you want to at this point you can go ahead and pause me and just kind of do it at your own pace um, the only thing that's going to change is when we go to connect these two sections together uh, but really that's not going to be much different either. So you can just kind of scrub through and meet up with me once, uh, once I get to a section that maybe looks confusing. That's a weird sound. Okay, I can move that out of the way so I can get my finger in there better. And just press and hold that together. So uh, this is going to go together pretty quick as far as the structure goes. Now, sometimes when we have structures like this, they're all disconnected. Luckily, based on the dimensions, we're able to keep them connected in the center, which certainly speeds things up. Okay, so just moving right along here. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm curious. Uh, if you have a cat, or if you are giving this to someone with a cat, uh, what kind of cat? I have an orange tabby, which is what this one is, but of course you can easily adapt this cat by changing up the colors. And I've got a cute story about how I met my cat. I was, years and years ago, going through a divorce and uh, the, the cat that we had went with her, so I was catless, needless to say, I was catless, and I was out, I don't remember where I was probably doing some grocery shopping or something and I well I guess I have to give you a little backstory here and by the way hopefully you can see what I'm doing here I'm still just doing the same exact thing I was doing just connecting these tabs so I'm gonna continue up on one side here I'll do this one uh, backstory is, is that well a lot of you know that I'm really into Halloween and I'd say it's probably been over 10 years now, maybe even longer. I started growing pumpkins and kind of obsessed. I, I've got a pretty nice pumpkin patch right now too. Um, back to this real quick. Again, just kind of lining this up, squeezing it, holding it. I think you get the idea here on what we're doing. So anyway, we're gonna put glue on this tab and just as I've done a number of times here, just kind of hitting it with my finger, spreading it out, 
And I'm gonna pop that underneath or behind this section here, line it up, and just hold that until it sets. All right, so you've got the pumpkin backstory. So I go into uh, this pet shop where they occasionally have cats for adoption. I walk in, there's only one cat, and it's an orange tabby, and I look at the name, and his name was Pumpkin. So I'm gonna put glue on this tab here. Spread that out and pop it behind this section. So Pumpkin and I went into went into a little area where I can interact with them and play with them. They brought out a laser pen and he just went bananas. And he just seemed really sweet. So I said, you know what, box him up. He's coming home with me. And uh, all right, so now we're here at this section here before this final section where we need to close it up. But again, the process is gonna be exactly the same. So we'll put some glue on one of these tabs. You can do that one first if you want. I'm doing this one. So they put pop pumpkin in a box. It was a makeshift box. It wasn't one of those official pet carriers. I was like, oh, that's fine. You get him in the car. He escapes, gets out of the box. But I thought he was going to freak out or something. He literally just sat down in the dry or in the passenger seat and just just drove home with me. Now I've gotten new cats before, and typically when you get them to a new place, some of them. They hide for a couple of days because they're freaked out, but nope, not Pumpkin. Literally, first day, he finds the couch and he sits down like he owns the place and and we've been pals ever since, so. Um, all right, so next tab here, I'm gonna hit that with my finger, dab it a little bit. And there we go. And uh, yeah, I love my kitty. He's, uh, I guess I could talk to him. I could talk about him this entire video. And if you're doing this, if you're making a cat box, chances are you won't mind me talking about him. <laughs> okay, so I've got my glue on that tab. I'm gonna tuck it behind its neighbor here. Get it nice and lined up. And just press and hold that. So Pumpkin is kind of an outdoor cat, but only during the day and only when I'm around to watch him. I've got a little tracker on his collar and I think he realizes how good he has it here. He never really goes very far away from the house. A couple times I've caught him maybe a hundred yards away, probably hot on the tail of a chipmunk or something, or hot on the trail, I should say. Uh, but he's pretty good about it and he's he's living the best life he can okay so all the tabs are connected now obviously we've got this section here where we need to join everything and well it's really no different than anything else that we've been doing uh, thus far so what I think I'll do let's see I'm probably gonna start in the middle just like we did now here it's gonna be a little bit uh, a little bit well, it's not going to be more difficult because we can use our table um, for leverage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the center tab here. I'm going to put glue on the center tab. I'm going to thin that out nicely so that when we connect it, it doesn't take forever to dry. And we'll be less prone to making any mistakes. So let's get that aligned. I'm kind of doing it like this, using these two fingers to apply the pressure and since it's tacky it should just take a few seconds to get that initial hold and when it does I'm gonna pop it on my table and press down on the table like that okay so I just kind of flipped it had my finger back on the back side of the tab Let's see if you can see there's a good angle and there's my finger there that was on the tab and I'm pressing down and now you can see now we've got that seam nice and connected, and that's going to make easy work of the rest of this section here. 
Now I may recommend being patient again and letting that fully set before you before you start pulling on this thing. And there we go. And give that just a few seconds to dry. Okay. So a couple ways of doing this. Uh, well, actually there are a couple ways of doing it. You can try if you want to just kind of push this in a little bit and get your glue on here like so. I'm gonna show you all the different possible methods, okay? And I'm not overly concerned about getting glue all the way down to the very bottom of that. It's still gonna hold nicely. And this is just the structural piece. There's still gonna be some overlays that go on this. And as long as I'd say 90% of the tab is making contact with the neighboring section, it'll be structurally sound. So you don't have to obsess about making sure every little section is, uh, well, every section of the tab is making contact. Okay, so there's, there's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it would be to take your glue and on a scrap piece of paper, just throw a little bit of glue on it and then literally just paint the underside of the neighboring piece that we're gluing the tab to and then take that tab and press it right up against that little area where we just added that glue. Okay, so that's another way of kind of gluing and getting glue into tight spaces. And then I guess another way of doing it would be from the inside. You can take, hopefully you can see that, you can take the tab and fold it over and then you can stick your glue bottle through the inside and apply your glue. I always find that to be a little messier. And then I'll take my finger, spread that glue around, okay? And then we'll just connect it. And I think of those three methods, I think I prefer the one where I paint the glue with a scrap piece of paper, just because it allows me to really thin that glue out, not use a lot. And I do feel like I just have better control. So I'm gonna use that method one more time. Just paint some glue on that tab, or on that section, and then press that tab into place. Okay, and again, this thing is fully constructed now, as far as the structure goes, and barely any signs of a gluey mess. The inside looks great, structurally very sound, and we'll give that a few moments to set, and then we'll put, uh, well, we're gonna put the bottom on. So look for these two pieces. You'll notice that one of them has the letter L on it, and that is a liner that's gonna go inside, but this is gonna be our actual bottom. Okay, so we're gonna put that on here in just a moment. All right, so our kitty's little body is pretty much assembled here. We're gonna put the bottom on and begin by anchoring this piece here. Now remember, there's two pieces that look like this. One has a little L cut into it. So you want the one that does not have the L. And we're gonna put glue on just one tab initially Okay, I'm gonna spread that glue out to the very edges. And we're gonna get this nice and centered and anchored. And then the rest of it will go on very easily. So just kind of butt that up pretty much right up to where it folds. There we go. You can put it down on your surface if you'd like to help it set faster. There we go. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then push this out of the way. We're going to get our glue on the remaining tabs. And get this closed up. Going a little bit heavier on the glue here because I've got a lot of surface area to work with and I don't want it to dry too quick. I'll spread that glue out to the very edges. Just like that. And last 
last one. And then we're going to close this up. And as we do that, what you want to do is you want to focus on aligning this side, the side opposite of the side that's already hinged and get that nice and lined up. And in doing so, the rest of it usually falls into place, as you can see here. And it pretty much did. And then you want to go ahead and just press down, run your finger along the edges all the way around. And if it looks like it's lined up nicely, you can then flip it over and it should be enough room to get your hand in there and push down to get the rest of those sections to really take hold. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at my bottom here. Make sure everything is making good contact. If you have a little area that maybe is drooping a bit or not making full contact, grab that, that piece of scrap paper that you used and put a little bit of glue on it and just pop it in between those two areas there where they're maybe not making great contact and then just, just give that a little press and hold that and that'll close it up nicely. And all the other sides look pretty darn good to me. Okay, so now we're gonna take our glue and we're gonna put glue, pardon my head here, I'm gonna put glue around the perimeter on the inside and then just a little bit in the center see that kind of looks like a jack-o-lantern or jack-o-lantern's face and we're going to pop this liner in place and then press that down and that's going to help make this box more sturdy and there we go okay so this guy is good to go now one thing that you want to pay attention to is that um, there is a set of numbers on here and it goes one two they're basically roman numerals until you get to the four and the four is uh, four marks in the shape of a circle okay uh, we have a guide on this on the website under the help section uh, that will kind of show you how the numbering conventions work but uh, the reason that's important is because these panels that we're about to put on also have the same numbers on them. And you'll notice that they're in different places, some of them, okay? So you want to kind of get them in order. And one other, one other thing I wanna mention is that these pieces, I'm gonna take two of these and rotate it. You'll notice that they're not the same width uh, on top and the bottom. So you wanna make sure that you have the orientation correct. Make sure that, um, well, make sure that you have the longer edges all together facing the same direction so we don't accidentally get them in the wrong spot or have them upside down I should say okay so these are all correct now and you'll notice that I inked both sides because I goofed up I realized that we we're using this pattern and not the polka dots so there's a mistake but it's okay because you're not going to see that part uh, so anyway make sure that the orientation is correct on all these and then take a look at the numbering conventions here and let's get them all in order. So our one is up here. And in some of these areas, the number is kind of hidden, okay? It's not hidden, it's just in a different spot. And the reason for that is just so that it wouldn't show up uh, on the actual design. It's in an area here that's gonna be covered up by something else later on. So our two is right here. So I'm gonna put that there. This is our three. And let's see if I can find my four. Okay, this is our four. It, the four doesn't have uh, a marker on it, so it's blank. That, that's how you know it's the four. Our five is here. It's the little circle with the one. And then this is our six. It's the circle with the Roman numeral two next to it. Okay, so we've got all six sides here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna start with one. I'm gonna find side one, there's our Roman numeral one, and this is gonna get glued like so, okay? And I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to train this, I'm just gonna leave it as is, because we want it to be nice and curved like that, okay? So again, make sure you find your one, find the one, and what we're gonna do to get this glued into place and I think I'm gonna start at 
Well, actually, it shouldn't even matter if you start at the bottom or the top. Yeah, I'm gonna start at the top. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna put glue, I guess I'll just, I'm gonna put it on the tab, on the actual panel. Okay, so this is the back of the panel, and I'm just gonna go about, oh, what is that? About an inch down. You don't need to go all the way, just about an inch. But you do wanna make sure that you spread that glue all the way up to the top, so the top is nice and nice and flush and is not peeling back. Again, make sure that you're on the number one. And there's our one. Make sure it's centered. And then I'm using these two fingers here just to make sure that it is in fact nice and flush with the very top. And give it a little nudge left or right, depending on where it needs to go to be nice and centered. Just press that down. And that looks good. Okay. And now we can flip her over. And again, just about an inch, maybe just an inch. Okay, and then work that glue out to the very bottom as well. A little easier if I can hold it better. Okay, and all we wanna do is just make sure that we get it nice and lined up and flush with the bottom, as close as we can get and try to make sure that it's nice and even. Okay, so there's our one, and that looks nice. <clears throat> and just hold that, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Give that a few seconds to fully, fully set. Okay, so there's piece number one. We'll grab piece number two, and essentially, I'm gonna repeat the same process and just get all of these glued in place until they form our cute little bottom. Okay, so apply the glue to the back of the panel. I'd go just about an inch down, should be fine. And spread that glue up to the top so everything looks nice and flush up there. And again, this is section two, piece number two, or panel two. Use those fingers to make sure that it is in fact nice and flush with the top. And before you completely commit, just make sure that it does in fact look like it's lined up nicely. You're gonna see a little bit of a gap there, but not much. And if you inked, it's really gonna hide that and make it look um, aesthetically Perfect. Okay, so that looks like that took hold. I'll hold it like this and get my glue on the bottom now. There we go. Spread that glue all the way down to the very edge and pull that down. If you need to give it a little nudge left or right, now would be the time and just hold that in place, let that set. Okay. There we go. And again, this process here is going to be pretty repetitive, so it's up to you. If you wanna follow along with me, you're welcome to. Otherwise, you're gonna continue on to section three, four, five, and six until all of these overlays, or these panels, are in their corresponding locations. And then we'll move on to our next section here. So again, this is three. Make sure that again, and you'll notice that if you have it upside down, it's gonna be way bigger than this top section. So you wanna make sure you have, have the orientation correct on the panel. And again, I'm going down just about an inch or so. And I'm gonna Paint that glue up to the very, very, very top there. <clears throat> and get that lined up. Using my fingers here to kind of feel and make sure that it is in fact nice and lined up. And just kind of doing a little visual check here to make sure everything is looking good. And it is. It's looking nice. There we go. 
All right. And same thing. This is gonna be a repetitive process, but again, we're showing this because we wanna make sure that you get the correct panels in the correct spot. Um, I guess if you, if you goof up and you don't, it's not the end of the world. Um, basically, the reason that we're, we have all these numbered is to help you with the next section, which is the little overlays on top of these overlays, which essentially are the little stripes on the cap. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And, you know, the tie and where the tie goes and things of that nature, the collar. Actually, I think the collar goes on the lid, so that's not a problem. But anyway, that's looking pretty good so far. And I think I might have got a little glue on there. It's okay. All right, let's see down here, I didn't get that completely flush. So make sure you're patient and that everything is looking nice and crisp at the bottom and the top. The centers are basically like a, they're just floating. You can see the gaps there, but that's fine because we want this thing to look nice and round. Okay, so I'm on number four, and number four is the, uh, it's the four marks in the shape of a square or a circle, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm just gonna keep on cruising here. Keep her moving. And spread that glue out to the top, the very, very top. Get that nice and lined up. And using my two pointer fingers here as kind of almost like a, a barrier or a wall. And those little feelers to make sure that I got everything nice and lined up. That looks good. Okay, and back to the bottom. There we go. And just make sure that that is nice and flush, not going over the very base here. Hold that in place while it sets. Maybe be able to fit a ton of catnip in here. I don't know if I don't know if pumpkin or whoever whoever gets this is gonna be able to handle this much catnip. <laughs> it's a good size. Okay. And of course, you know, it doesn't have to be a gift for a pet. You can absolutely give this to someone and put like human cookies in it and then they'll have a little keepsake for themselves because, you know, they love cats. Okay, so on to the next section here. I'm going to spread that glue out to the very top. And again, keep in mind here, I'm on section five. I've got piece number five. Section five is the, uh, it's the square made of four dashes with a just a single room, uh, Roman numeral one next to it. There we go. Got it nice and flush at the top. And all right, now we'll flip her over and get our glue on the bottom. Spread that glue out to the very edge. Kind of bouncing around like a diving board, but that's okay. And get that nice and lined up with the very bottom. So far, so good. And just hold that down. Take a look and check your work here. Make sure everything is nice and flush there at the bottom. And that just leaves our last piece, number six. And here is piece number six with the little identifier on there. And let's get our glue on the top section. Hopefully I 
Got all the patterns right. I think I did. Okay. And pop that into place. Should match up pretty nicely. Again, we're, we're dealing with, um, well, we're, de we're dealing with paper and we're trying to make it look round, which isn't exactly easy to do. So if for some reason, if it looks a little off, as long as it has the general shape, it's gonna look fine. Okay, and then we're gonna glue that to the bottom and you can see how nice that looks. Give that a second to fully set up at the top there. And flip that down, get our glue. Right there, had a little too much shoot out there. There we go. Okay, and finish this part up. Just make sure that the very edge, very bottom of this is nice and lined up with the underlying layer there, the main structure, I should say, just so that when everything is said and done, it sits nice and flat for us. Okay, and that looks pretty darn good. I think I might be a tiny bit off here by literally maybe a tenth of an inch, but hey, you know what? That is expected, because I'm not a robot, and I, you know, can make mistakes. It's not really a mistake because it still looks great. Okay, so that part is done. And we can move on to uh, putting the little embellishments on here. Okay, so here's where we're gonna decide whether or not, or not whether or not, but whether we want a male or female cat. And well, obviously if you want to do the female version, you're gonna take this piece here and we're going to glue this white section to the green section. We're going to get that nice and centered like so. And then we've also cut out a little gold piece. It's going to go in the center of that. And I also have a little gemstone that we're going to throw in there. Actually, I'm doing, <clears throat> I'm just gonna be doing the male version. So I may not actually throw that on there, but you're welcome to obviously throw some bling on here to jazz it up. Okay. So once you have this together, if you're doing the female version on panel number one, you're gonna glue this down. Okay, and you wanna make sure that it's nice and lined up with this entire orange section. You're gonna put glue on the whole thing literally this entire thing, and we're gonna glue it down right there. Make sure that it's nice and flush all the way down, okay? So this is if you're doing the female version, okay? But I'm doing the male version. So I'm gonna put that off to the side, and I'm gonna grab the tie, and you can see here, I've got the tie, I've got it nice and inked. And there's a little gold piece that we're gonna glue to the tie. I'm just gonna hit that with a tiny little bit of glue. I don't need a ton. It's a real small piece. And it's gonna go on right there. You can see the little shadow area where that's gonna sit. And just press that down. Okay, now if necessary, um, I'm using a, a little bit of a thicker paper here. So if you want, you can lightly train this just to kind of curve it backwards a little bit. Okay, but again, on section one, that's where our tie is gonna go. So let me grab my glue, we'll get this glued down. And kind of like we did with the, with the panel, up at the top, and probably at the tip of the tie on the bottom, I'm gonna make sure that you get that glue all the way out to the very edges, like so, and then down here, so it doesn't come pulling away at the top or bottom. Okay, again, I'm on section one, and I'm gonna glue that down, making sure that it's nice and aligned with that underlying panel. That looks pretty good. And then just follow it all the way down and hold the very base, the very bottom tip of the tie in place as well. And just kind of work your way up and down the tie, making sure everything's getting good contact there, okay? 
So there is our male version. And then of course, we gotta put the little stripes on them. So we're gonna do that here in just a second. And there we go. All right, so as far as the stripes go, you'll notice that there are two different patterns. So these two, if you put them on top of each other, they're identical. And these two, if you put them on top of each other, they're also identical. You wanna make sure that you fold them in the center there. Okay, okay, and this is where the whole numbering convention thing comes into place. I'm gonna grab the larger one, and you can see here, we're gonna take it right where the fold is, I'm gonna place it on this corner, and then these two little markers here should pretty much align with the two little valleys on that section there, and then there's one little marker here that should align with the little valley between these two areas here. Okay, and that's how you know that you have it in the right spot. If it's a tiny bit off, it's not gonna make or break the project, but if you, you know, wanna make it as we intended it to be made, you wanna use those markers and just kinda follow along with me here. So let's get our glue on. I'm just gonna put glue on this whole thing. It's a pretty small piece. I think I can, I think I can handle it. And this pattern on the back here makes it kinda hard to see where my glue is, so. Hopefully I don't have to go back and fix anything, but as you're placing this down, start by aligning it with the edge or the corner here, and then take a look for that marker over on the far side and then on this side as well, and then just kind of run your fingers along the entire structure to get it in place. And maybe just hold the very ends to make sure that it really has a good hold there. Okay, so there is stripe number one. And then we'll grab the smaller one. And we can always go back in if we have little areas that maybe aren't making the best contact. Just take a scrap piece of paper with a little extra glue on it, paint it underneath, and then press it down and hold it. Okay, that looks good. All right, so now we're gonna grab the smaller one and we'll get our glue on the back of this. I'll tell you what, before you, before you put this on, and before you apply glue, just make sure that it feels right as far as where the fold is. Because I think this one, if I try to do it with a smiley, that doesn't look right. So this one, this one's gonna be a frowny, and then this one's gonna be a smile. Okay, and that makes sense too because of where it is. So uh, the top one, you wanna make sure that it kind of looks like a smiley face, and then the bottom one is gonna look like a frowny, okay? Okay, so again, top one smiley, bottom one frowny. It's very subtle, but you should be able to see the difference as far as... Okay, so again, you're gonna line up the very edge. You'll see that there are two little markers there that should kind of hug the little valleys or the little dips there. And then there's one here, just like that. And just hold that in place for just a moment, let it set, and you can see what that's starting to look like from the front. That looks nice. Okay. And then the bottom one here, remember this is gonna be the frowny, so let me try to explain that one more time. You can kind of tell how it's kind of curving downward on the ends, where here it looks like a smiley face. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. That's what happens when you try to make a paper cat, I guess. Okay. There you go. And again, look for that little first set of markers just below it. Go ahead and pop that on there so that the corner where it's folded matches up with the corner of the overlays. And then look for the little markers, get those right in the, in the place. They may be off by a smidge and that's okay. There we go. And there we go, okay. All right, so now on the back of this, we have a cute little tail, and we're actually gonna zot this or use some foam squares. 
and it's two layers. So I'm going to take the top layer and apply some glue, glue it to the bottom layer. And then I'll get my foam squares out and we can go ahead and get that applied. Okay, so just going to pop that right on top there like so. Just make sure that the bottom matches up nicely, should be nice and flush all the way around. There we go. It's a cute tail. And let me get my foam squares. I can flip this over. And I think we'll start with one here at the bottom. And I think we could probably just get away with maybe just using two of them. Uh, yeah, because that's it's a very delicate little area there, and it's two layers thick, so it's not going to really jiggle around too much. I think two layers is going to be just fine. And we're going to take the tail, and the tail is going to go all the way at the bottom, nice and centered. Make sure that the bottom of the tail is nice and flush with the base. Okay, and actually, because of the curvature, I'm going to pop that off, and I'm going to add one more right here. And then I'm going to use a half of one up near the base of the tail, or the tip of the tail, I should say. Okay, there we go. And you may want to just kind of bend it a little bit and get it into a nice curved position. Keep forgetting we're working with curved items here. Okay, nice and centered. Look at the, the tail, the tip of the tail, and make sure that that is nice and centered. And then go ahead and get that applied. And there we go. Okay, so there's our cute little tail. And there is the front. Could maybe even center that a little bit more, but I, I kind of like the little loop there on the tip of the tail in the center. So, all right, that looks good. Um, I think, as far as I remember, every cat has a head. Um, so we need, to put, we need to put one together. And <clears throat> that is made up of these two sections here. Okay, so I've already pre-folded everything. And kind of similar to what we did with the base. We're just gonna need to put this together. And then we do have some overlays that are gonna go on top of that as well process is going to be pretty much exactly the same and um, before you know it mr mr pumpkin here will be ready to go okay so we're going to begin putting together the lid and as i mentioned i've got everything already pre-folded and you can see that everything's already connected at this base section here so we're going to work from the bottom up and we do have a small tab here. It is functional, so we're definitely going to take advantage of it. Just throw a tiny little bit of glue on there, hit it with your finger, and bring it right behind its neighbor, and just press and hold. It's, again, it's a, a really small tab, so just have to be patient. Just make sure that it's making contact, and Give that a squeeze, peel this back so that we can expose the next tab and get our glue on there. If you get a bunch that squirts out initially, it's okay because you can always just take it and just kind of paint it or dab it around with your finger. There we go. And it's really important that you fold everything all these little score marks here because um, that will allow this piece to kind of take its shape more easily. If this was not folded here, this would be straight and it would be harder to take and, and bend this down into position. So just make sure that before you get started with any gluing that you fold everything at every single little score mark here, including the tabs and the, the various sections. Okay, so just throwing glue on that next little area there and getting that connected. There we go. 
And this is a lot smaller than the base, which means that the tabs are smaller, which means we need less glue, which ultimately means that it should go a lot quicker as well. Now, this top section here with this little hexagon, we're going to leave that alone until the end. Um, that's going to go on top and close everything off once this and this section are all put together. But you can see what that first little section looks like. That looks like a success to me. And then we can move on to the next little area here onto this tiny little tab. Tuck that behind its neighbor. Get your finger back there and just press that down and hold it. Make sure that you've got the alignment as spot on as you can get it. Yeah, and as you can see from my face, I have gotten some sun recently. They say that's a good thing. Okay. Next tab here. It's, uh, it's nice that had some sense of normalcy with a lot of states reopening lately. Almost feels back to normal in some ways. <clears throat> Haven't really gone anywhere crazy. Just um, a little lake house here and there. Actually probably getting away from people more than anything. distancing myself even more <laughs> on vacation, which I guess is, is helping the cause while also keeping me sane. All right, so as you can see here, literally just doing the same thing, putting glue on the tabs, connecting them with the neighboring areas. Okay. And the last one here. And then just like we did with the base, we'll be connecting these two sections together to make it one. And really, I guess, like I said, the most important thing here is just to make sure that you get the alignment as spot on as you can. There we go. I'm going a little slow today, I, I think. I've, I've read some comments that I kind of zip through things. Um, since we had our sale, uh, Ron, our art director, who designed these beautiful items in this new bundle. He's moving to a new residence, so he took a little time off. I took a little time off. And I haven't been in the craft room for over a week now. Okay, so I'm actually, you know, before we do that, um, we're gonna take and connect these two sections together. I'm gonna start at the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna put glue on this tab here. And we'll take the other section here, get that lined up, and get that glued into place. Just make sure that <clears throat> everything is nice and aligned there. Just like that. Okay, hold that in place. I'm gonna actually put that down on my surface and press down and really let that set. Because again, that's gonna it's gonna be taking on uh, quite the load with all this stuff dangling off of this one little tab from both sides. So we want that to be nice and dry before we move on. Okay, now we can work our way up. So we'll put glue on the next tab. Give that a little dab and get that nice and aligned. So yeah, I'm just kind of I'm kind of getting my feet wet back in the craft room here after a little bit of time off and I obviously I'm, I'm going a little slow and that's okay. I'm going to speed things up here in a bit. I'm actually almost done with this project. This one's going to go. The rest of this is going to be a cakewalk or a catwalk. Cat run. Okay. You know, what would be really funny is uh, if you guys make any of these for yourselves and you have cats, I'd love to see you guys post pictures of these with your cats next to them. You can tell us about your cats 
and what they thought of this project when they saw it. They'll probably look at it like, well, I think if I showed my cat this, he'd look at me like I'm crazy. <clears throat> I think we all got to be a little crazy to fall in love with felines. Okay. And moving right up here, next tab. So you can see here that this is, at this point, pretty repetitive. If you feel comfortable, you can go ahead and pause me and skip ahead or just work on your own. Putting glue on that next tab, that small one. Let me move this out of the way. And just press and hold that in place. Make sure that you've got it nice and lined up. tab. There we go. <clears throat> you know, sometimes I wonder how many of you actually watch me glue every single one of these tabs since it is kind of redundant and repetitive, I never want to leave any steps out, even if they are redundant, because I know you can fast forward and rewind and pause and whatever you need to do. But I'm curious, if you're, if you're on YouTube, <clears throat> what's, your, uh, what's your style of watching these videos? Do you... Do you watch them all the way through? Do you craft along with me? Do you kind of scrub through to get the to get the gist of it and then kind of do it on your own? I'm curious. I'm not going to change the way I do it. I'm just curious. Okay, so almost there. We've got one more little tab here, this little skinny guy. We'll get some glue on that. Get that nice and lined up. And yeah, just hold that in place for an extra second. This one, since it's small, I feel like it needs a little extra time. And there we go. And you can just peel that back. Make way for the next tab. Way too much glue on there. That's when, that's when things take forever to dry when you overdo it on the glue. Okay, almost there. There we go. Okay. All right, one more and then we're gonna join it together and essentially it's the same thing. It's just that it's not and it's not hinged or anchored by an existing piece like it has been here at the bottom. Uh, but not going to be difficult at all. And then we'll have the top structure done, add some panels and some overlays and before you know it, you got your little cat box here. Okay, so you want to just make sure you slide all these tabs underneath. Okay, kind of looks like a like a honeycomb a little bit. And you know what? I'm going to start up at the top. So I'm going to put glue on the top tab first. I think it might be easier to work from the top down. We'll tuck that under, get that lined up, and just again make sure that you get that lined up as accurately as possible and just press and hold that in place just for a moment. And this is where we're gonna go back to kind of gluing strategies and uh, processes here. You can determine and figure out what's easiest for you. Uh, I can certainly peel this back a little bit, but I think it may be easier to kind of flip this over 
fold these tabs down and apply the glue from the inside so that we don't add any extra stress on the piece and risk tearing it. Okay, so I've got glue on that second tab from the top and I'm just tucking it behind, lining it up and pressing and holding in place. Here we go. And then we can flip it over, get our glue on the next tab. You can see it there. It's nice and yellow, so it should show up despite the shadow. Okay, got the glue on there. Go ahead and push it up against the inside of its neighboring piece here. There we go. You can see the little holes here for the, uh, for the ears, ultimately. <clears throat> and that just leaves two more little tabs. We got one here. And when I'm applying the glue from the inside like this, I'm kind of keeping the nozzle up against the paper. So that prevents, prevents it from coming out um, too intensely and it keeps it nice and flat. And that's really how I prevent getting glue from going all over the place. Uh, I either keep the nozzle nice and flat up against the paper or use my finger to kind of spread it out nice and thin. All right, so last one, there she is. Okay, so the top is coming together here. And then all we need to do is close it up, this little hexagon. This is where the hexagon comes into play now. So what we wanna do is poke the little tabs out a little bit, okay? And then we're gonna just put like a drop of glue this is all gonna be covered up, so it doesn't need to be picture perfect. Okay, so you see how I got the glue on there? And if you want, it might actually help. I'm gonna take a dowel and just kind of run it through and push those tabs up even more so that as I'm pushing down on this and closing up this little hexagon, it's actually making more contact and more hitting more surface area on those tabs. Okay, so that looks good. The inside looks good. And I'm just gonna press that down from the inside. And don't worry too much if this hexagon isn't like perfectly in place. It's gonna be covered up by, uh, well, actually a nice little stripe. Okay, so just make sure that it's making good contact and that it is holding this together nicely. And there we go. This is the little piece that I was talking about. That's gonna cover that up nicely. So if it's not perfect, not a big deal at all. Okay, time for panels. Okay, now all the panels are gonna be the same minus, obviously, this one here needs to go here because of this little cutout. Okay, so that's gonna go on there like that. And then of course we have this one here that's gonna align with the little slit for the ear. And then this one here is gonna go here to align with that one. The other three are all completely identical and it doesn't matter where they go, okay? So we'll start off with the front because I think that's the most important. And kind of like what we did with the base structure, we're gonna begin by just putting glue on maybe the first top inch and then we're gonna glue down the bottom. Okay, so let's do that. Let me clean off my nozzle tip here. And let's get some glue on, again, probably just about the first inch or so. That's about an inch. And spread that glue up to the very, very top edge just to make sure that it sits nicely for us. And get that lined up. You want the top of this to butt up against the edge of our little hexagon that we just put on there. Now before it dries too much, take a look and just make sure that when you bring it down, it lines up nicely with this little V and this little section at the bottom, and it does. Mine came out pretty much spot on. Okay, so I'm just gonna wait for that to set. And just like we did with the base, I'm gonna take and apply my glue to the bottom here. like so, and I'm gonna spread that glue out to the very edge, get rid of that, before that makes a mess. Okay, 
pull it down. You don't need to pull it too taut. Just bring it down enough to where you can see that it lines up nicely with the edge of the structure. And just hold that in place. You can certainly put that down on your surface and press down for some extra leverage. It'll make your drying time a little more efficient. And there we go. Okay, so that looks nice. Now we can move on to our ear. Now with this one here, you can see how that's gonna line up with the little slit for the ear. Okay, now with this one here, I think we're gonna, we're gonna bring the glue down a little bit more, more than we did before. So I'm gonna bring it down to about here, just so that the two slits, the one on the structure and the one on the tab, or I'm sorry, the panel that we're putting on, helps them kind of stay in line more. Okay, so again, get that nice and lined up with the very edge of the little hexagon up there. And then also, as you're bringing it down, just make sure that the slit, make sure you can see through it. Uh, let me put something white underneath there so you can see. You can see the white in there. There it is. If it's not like perfectly in place, it's okay. Just as long as it's about a paper thickness, uh, as long as you've got about a paper thickness in there so that we can stick the ears in, that's all you really need. It doesn't have to be completely spot on. Okay, so we'll go back down here, get our glue on the bottom, spread that out all the way to the very edge. Okay, and bring that down. And a little excess glue there. Get that nice and lined up. Looks like my slit is looking good. And I can use my surface here. Press that down into place. And there we go. That's looking good. And we'll move along here to the other ear. Get our glue. The top here, go about, about two thirds of the way down where the slit is. There we go. <clears throat> and get that nice and flush up against the hexagon. Kind of nudge it around a little bit just to make sure that the slit for the ears isn't being obstructed. And just hold that in place for a moment. Actually do that too. Use your table for some leverage. That looks perfect. And then we'll move along down here. Get our glue on the bottom. Spread that out all the way to the very edge here. And pull that down. Again, keeping uh, keep your eye on the slit for the ears. Make sure that that is nice and aligned. It should pretty much fit and align perfectly with the bottom, if you have that in place correctly. <clears throat> I'm gonna put that down on your surface and press, and that just leaves three more little tabs, or three more panels, I should say. Okay, that's looking pretty darn good. I dig it. Okay, and then the last three here, again, these are all the same, and nothing special that we have to do here other than to glue them down. I'm gonna go about an inch down, spread that glue out to the very, very edge. Get that lined up with the edge of the little hexagon piece. And then bring it down and then give it a little nudge left or right, depending on where it needs to go, so that it's kind of butting up to the neighboring piece. I'd say that looks about right. Just hold that down. Give that a few moments to dry. That looks good. And then let's get our glue on the bottom of this panel. Rinse and repeat a couple more times. And then we can have some fun giving our cat a face and some ears. Okay, so just bring that down. Make sure that it's nice and aligned and flush with the bottom. 
And actually, if you're off by a smidge, it's okay because this is where we're going to put the collar on. And the collar is pretty much identical. Um, it's just the, the male collar doesn't have little scallops on it where the female one does. Okay, so that's that. Moving right along here to the final two panels. Okay, so just about an inch or so. There we go. And get that lined up. And when you bring it down, just make sure that it's nice and flush there at the bottom. And then hold that top part in place until it's set. Oh, let me use my finger. It's looking sharp. How's yours coming along? Hopefully, hopefully good. You know, sometimes uh, if you're new to Dreaming Tree and you've not worked with round shapes like this, and this is your first one, don't 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 be hard on yourself if uh, if you're having issues. Just be patient. Just remember, less glue is more. And take your time and have fun. Okay, bringing that down, making sure that it is nice and aligned with the edge. And then also keep your eyes on that edge there. Try to make sure it's nice and centered, that it's not overlapping or too far over to the left. Use your surface for some extra leverage. And there we go. And that just leaves us one more. And again, about an inch or so. Get that glue all the way up to the top. That looks good. And get that nice and centered in between the two existing pieces that are already there. Hold that in place and then make sure that it does in fact line up nicely with the bottom. That looks good. So I'm gonna commit to that spot and just hold it. And I'm still going to continue holding it with my thumb or whatever finger is most comfortable. And I'll come down here and finish this off. Get that glue all the way down. And get that nice and aligned. Again, making sure it's nice and flush with the bottom of the actual structure itself. And then we can push that down. There we go. I'd say that looks pretty darn good, actually. Let's take a look here. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, that's nice. So far, so good. There we go. Okay. All right. So now, as I mentioned before, um, if you're making the female version of this, you have the little collar with the scallops on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin by gluing this to the base here. Now, um, the female version is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, you don't wanna see the orange showing through. So you wanna bring this down and you'll be able to kind of figure out where this needs to go, here, let me, we need to fold these over too here in one second. I'm going to start off by putting the front on. And you can see up here, if we have it all the way up here, now this is an extreme example, but if we have it all the way up here, you'll notice that these edges here, these corners where the folds are, they don't match up with the edges on this. Now if we bring it down here, obviously it's not matched up here either. You want to find that sweet spot. And you'll know it's you know you'll know that you've got the sweet spot because a number one, uh, it'll feel good. You won't see any orange poking through here, and then also this tab will be right where this seam is. Okay, and that's how you know you've got it in the sweet spot. So what I'm about to show you now with the male version, same exact thing, same process except that. Um, well, again, you don't have don't have little scallops on it. And now this one, this one is actually going to align exactly with the very bottom. Okay, so I guess in a sense, 
the male version is a little bit easier to work with, but the female version is not difficult by, by any means. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by putting glue on the center part of the front of the collar, like so, just like that. We're gonna get the center part of this on first. And again, because it matches up, shouldn't be very difficult to get the alignment correct. And there it is, just like that. Make sure, give that a little push if you need to and make sure that that in fact is nice and flush up against the actual structure and the panels. Okay, so that looks good. We'll hold that with a couple fingers while we get glue on the next section here. Go easy on the glue here. Okay, and then you can also put glue on this little tab here. That's gonna be the other section, the other half of this is going to go over this tiny little tab. Okay, so that looks good. Make sure again, it's nice and flush here. Again, if you're, if you're making the female version of this, that won't be flush, but just make sure that you are not seeing any of the orange, in my case, orange, showing through the little scallops. And also that the folds on the collar match up with the seams on the actual lid. Okay, and then I'll throw a little bit of glue on that tab there. And I'm just gonna hit that with my finger and bring that over. Again, make sure the bottom is nice and flush and aligned. I think I might be off by a hair, but that's okay. Off by a hair, don't care. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's the front of the collar. That looks nice. And then we just need to close it up. So if you're, again, if you're making the female version, If you're making the female version, this will be on, and you're gonna get the back, and we're gonna put that on. But in my case, I'm gonna put on the back of the male version, which isn't really much different, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna finish this up by putting the rest of the collar in place, and we're gonna begin by gluing the center piece first, and then as you can see, once we get the two sides in place, they'll overlap with that little tab that was there initially. Okay, so let's get that going here. I'm just gonna hit that with my finger a little bit to spread it out better. Get that nice and centered, nice and flush with the bottom as well. I'm kind of using my fingers to push it down a little bit if necessary to make sure that it's aligned properly. And then you can use my table, press that into place, and then the other two sides are gonna go on nice and easy. There we go. Just like that. That lined up, and as you can see here on this, on the uh, yeah, let's see here, yeah, on the male one, uh, I used just a, a regular. You can see here on the male one, the your machine's actually going to cut the little stitching in there. Um, if you know how to do a cut and then draw, you could have your machine draw in the stitching. Uh, I just kind of filled it in with a like a jelly pen. I might have just actually used a regular pen. I'm not, I don't remember now. Okay, and we got this last piece in place. Just make sure it's nice and flush on the bottom. Okay, there we go. Let's take a look at that. Okay, that looks nice. And I need to just uh, add some ears. There's a little stripe on the top. Let's put the ears together first real quick so that they have time to dry. And you're gonna fold them, fold it in half. Okay, and these, these are the little tabs that we're gonna use to glue the ears to the inside 
of the lid. And then each of the ears is gonna have this little pink piece. And you wanna make sure that you actually bring that all the way down to where the score marks are. Okay, so we don't want that in the center here. We want it all the way down to where the score marks are. So let's do that real quick. Let's get some glue on this pink piece. There we go. And we're gonna pop that in. And again, just make sure that is nice and flush with the bottom there. I'm gonna push that down flat real quick just to make sure it's making good contact, but then immediately fold it back. Okay, just like that. And then again, these are the two little tabs that we're gonna use to anchor it to the lid. So that's nice. Again, so fold that in half. Get these tabs out of the way for just a moment. Grab your other pink piece and get your glue on the back of that. There we go. And bring that all the way down like so. And I'm going to press that down flat real quick and then bring it back into a fold. Get those tabs ready. We'll let that set for just a moment. And in the meantime, you can put the face on. Now here's the cute little mouth and there's a pink little nose that's going to go on top of this little black section. So you want to throw, find the nose. Do a couple little dots on the back there. You don't need a lot. And we're going to glue that right there. Just make sure that it's lined up nicely with the black section. And our mouth is going to go on there too. It's a cute little tongue. It's a tiny little piece. So just one little drop of glue will do. Just like that. And you want that to, you want to line that with the very bottom of the center of the black part. Just like that. Okay. And then you'll notice on panel one here, well actually this isn't numbered, but the front panel, there are some little markers here to help you ensure that your kitty's face is nice and symmetrical and aligned. And you're going to put the, the nose portion right in there. Okay, so a couple drops of glue here and there, and then try to get a little tiny bit of glue right on the very edge of the mouth. I'm gonna do one more little drop there. If you do too much, just kind of hit it with your finger, thin it out so it doesn't go splattering everywhere. And just get it nice and lined up with the little marker there. Put that into place, there you go, just like that. That looks good. Um, we're gonna add the little little dots where his, uh, his whiskers would be. I'm gonna actually do that with a pen. And the eyes, I'm just gonna glue some black pearls for the eyes. So just take a look at the final photo to see what that looks like. In the meantime, while we're here, I'm gonna put this little stripe on. Okay, and I'm gonna take and I'm actually going to just kinda give that a little bit of a, a curve just train it a tiny bit and we'll start by actually we can put glue on this section here and then I'm going to put glue on this stripe here the stripe is coming down towards the front of the face or the front of the head just like that okay and there's a fold here you want to match that fold up with the top of that panel, okay? And then just bring that down and hold that in place for just a moment. 
make sure it's nice and centered, which mine actually was a little bit off. That looks good. Okay. And now let's get our ears in place. Okay. Now these are symmetrical pieces. And what you want to do is just slip them through the little slits so that they're like that. Okay. And then you can see the little tabs in there. You're going to fold the tabs down once you get your glue in there. And let me take a look here, see which way is better. I don't really think it matters. I'm going to fold the tabs away from the ears. Okay. So from the inside, you can see the two little tabs there. Just do a dot of glue, nice dot of glue right there. And make sure that the pink part is nice and flush with the lid. Get it nice and centered and that the tabs are making full contact with the inside there. And just hold those two tabs in place and let those ears set. Okay. It's going to kind of go back a little bit and be patient while those set. There we go. There's ears, no ear number one. Now we'll grab the next one. Just slide it through the little slits like so. go just like that. You can see the little tabs there. So we'll get some glue, just two little dots, one dot, one dot like that. And then we're pushing them up against the inside here, I'm literally pushing it right here where my finger is, but from the inside. And then the same thing with the other one. And just give that ample time to dry. And there we go. Give that just a few more seconds. And that's really it. Again, um, take a look at the final photo to see what else we did. I mean, like I said, I've got the black pearls here for the eyes. Um, I'm going to just take a, a probably a thin marker and do a few little dots to indicate where the whiskers would be. And that's pretty much it. So here, you know what, might as well do this while you're here. Let me grab my pick me up tool and I'll just put the eyes on there cause it kind of doesn't look complete without the eyeballs. Okay. And here's what I typically do when I'm using my pick me up tool. I'll just put a little bit of glue on a scrap piece of paper and I'll grab my pick me up tool. I'll dip my, my pearl in there and thin it out. You don't need a ton of glue on there. And when placing the eyes, you want to put them just slightly above the nose and give it about maybe a half an inch or so away from the nose. Right about there. That looks good. A little bit of residue on there, but I can, I can take care of that once this is set. Okay. Grab the other one again, just slightly above the nose and then try to make sure that the distance is similar so that he looks nice and symmetrical. There we go. There he is. Okay. Um, so again, as I mentioned, take a look at the final photo to see what else we did to kind of jazz this up as far as pearls and, and bling uh, and the little dots for the whiskers. But aside from that, really cool little project. You've got the nice little tail on the back, plenty of room for some nice treats, whether it be a gift or a little decor piece for yourself. Maybe you can even keep your kitty's treats in this little thing um, for when it's snack time. But anyway, either way, hope you enjoyed the process. If you did, head on over to our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. While you're there, um, hit the little bell so that you get notifications anytime we release a new video. 
Um, and if you create this or anything from our new bundle, I would love to see it, and so would all of our 20,000 plus dreamers. So head on over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group, or you can just type in this address here. It'll take you there directly and, uh, and join us. But as I always say, I hope you enjoyed the process, and I look forward to crafting with you again.